And uh, thank you for, you know, uh, letting your former boss talk for a little while there. Well, Sergey, uh, one of the reasons I had to leave, uh, his, foot, his footwear choices were getting very close to barefoot, and uh, <laughs> he's, he's about one step away, I can tell, so. He's <laughs> well, you, 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 you and he seem <clears throat> to dress a little differently, I've noticed. This is actually Sergey's tie, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I saw Sergey this morning, by the way, at breakfast, and uh, I told him, I said, Sergey, he said, should I come to Web 2.0? And I said, yeah, you should come on over. I'm going on at 2 o'clock. And then I came over at 2 o'clock, and he had a microphone on. I said, Sergey, I guess you're going on at 2 o'clock. He said, perfect. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, thought, I thought perhaps AOL had found yet another owner. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, but in fact, that, that's the question that John Miller, who preceded you, uh, <clears throat> three years ago anyways, uh, in the job of running AOL, did give me a, a question to ask you, um, which I'll ask second, but first I'll ask you why. Uh, why did you take the, the CEO job um, at AOL uh, as opposed to, I imagine you had a number of options, including a, a really nice white sandy beach. Um, so what, what was it that compelled you to take the, the job at AOL? Yeah, I think first and uh, first of all, let me start with John Miller. I think that uh, John, one of the lucky things about my job is John did a couple acquisitions which we're, we're using now, so I, I owe him a thank you. Um, and two is, you know, really when I was thinking, I wasn't really thinking about leaving and the AOL opportunity came up and I, look at, I, I think there's three quick things. One, I'm a really, really big believer um, of what Sergey was just saying, that the internet is going to change, you know, a lot in the future and I'm a big believer of it's just beginning. Um, Two was that AOL has really interesting assets. I think you know one biggest reaction we get from people when we actually show them what we're doing, what we are doing today, and what we're going to do in the future is, you know, I didn't know AOL had that or did that, and uh, and I saw that from the outside, and I thought it was undervalued. And uh, I think number three is, you know, for me personally, Google was an incredible experience, and I loved every day of it, and I'm, I love Larry and Sergey and Eric and, and the company in general, but I felt, you know, I wanted to learn, and I, I, this job I've learned probably more in the last six months than I have um, in a long time, so I think it kind of fit all three of those things. And I, and I think, last of all, I think the company was ready to change. I think the AOL employee base is really ready to have the company be challenged and raise the expectations, so. Um, it strikes me that you would never have taken this job if the folks at Time Warner had not guaranteed you that you'd be able to spin it out. Um, is that true? Uh, that is not true, um, and uh, it was certainly in my mind, and, and I think um, one of the reasons that I took a chance to go over there, but it was, a, it was a chance, and we're not spun out yet, so I guess that is still a chance, but I spent a lot of time with Jeff Bukas, uh, and I do every week, actually. I usually spend a couple hours with him every week, and, you know, I, deciding where the companies were going strategic direction-wise, I think it made sense to spend it out, and I think, you know, Jeff is really the decision-maker on that, so I, it was probably a slight risk going over that that may or may not happen. But, but that's pretty much a fait accompli now. Is that, I mean, it hasn't happened, but it it doesn't happen, and, and I, I think it's been declared know, to shareholders order, yeah, that, that that's, that, that's going. the intention, and, and I don't right. think there's any different guidance than that. I, I'm not asking this. Uh, I swear to try to trip you up. I, I just want how uh, how does one do that? Is it are you going? To, is it a taking it public thing? Is it you know taking it private and then? Taking it public, do you have a plan? Yeah, um, no, it's really, I mean, if you're a Time Warner shareholder, let's, you know, if you have a dollar worth of Time Warner, you will get a piece of that dollar spun out to you in the, in the form of AOL. So it, all the existing shareholders of Time Warner will get, you know, a share of whatever the proportional share of AOL is. So it's a fairly basic transaction in, in that nature. And Time Warner uh, spun out Time Warner Cable earlier this year in the same type of fashion, so. Right, and then that becomes a secondary offering as well where the public can also buy a share. Right. Okay. So we'll look for that. Right. Are you guys are you ready? Gonna, for are you going to be buying? Uh, well, I don't know that I really can. Oh, okay. I'm afraid I, I don't buy and sell stocks. It's just <laughs> one of the things that drives my wife crazy. Um, uh, so, what is the, you know, is the company <coughs> ready for that as a standalone unit and, and separating the company from Time Warner I'm at, and doing the arm's length things you need to do to make that happen? Is that something that you feel the company's ready to do? Yeah, I think we've worked really hard. I mean, I, I have to say, um, you know, one thing I'm very proud of is how hard all the employees have worked to get where we're doing, because we basically set the company strategy. Um, we've had to get the uh, structure of the company underway. Uh, we're working on the cost structure of the company right now, and, and I think for any normal company, those three things would be a significant accomplishment over a couple year period. We've done those in really six, we're working on them over a six to eight month period. 
And then the last piece is actually preparing the company to go public, which it's you know, not public now, so there's an incredible amount of work on things like investor relations and, and taxes and those things. And you know, I, I, I think if we, we knew what we knew now, thinking we're gonna do it in the time period we've done, we probably would have said, given us some pause, but I think we, we've, we're in a good position to continue the path down, and, and uh, I think we're in, we're in good position. Um, one of the things that's obviously very important when you're an independent company is to show profitability and revenue growth. So how's, how's that going? Um, well, that's the tricky part. Um, and really... Uh, As Mark Cuban <laughs> pointed out last night, yeah, it's, it's important to have yeah, revenue. Yeah, revenue is important. So, you know, the, the thing people don't realize about AOL is the company is actually very profitable and, and, and puts out a lot of cash. Um, a lot of it's related to the access, you know, business. I, sh I should say the, the paid services business, because only a fraction of the money we get is actually from people who have dial-up. There's uh, more money that we get from people who have paid services with us, uh, which is interesting, by the way. That's an interesting part of the business. Um, but in reality, you know, the business that we're, the strategy we have and where we're going is we're very focused on growing a large platform around content and uh, monetizing that content and having a very attractive business for investors based on that, you know, principle. And I think that's the hard work that we have to get done and that we're working on right now. So when you think about revenue in 2010 for AOL, you know, there's a challenge where the paid services revenue has been declining over the years. And it's really up to the web services revenue to really grow, and I think we're, we're laser focused on that. So let's unpack that a little bit. When you say a platform for content, right? I'm, AOL has been known recently for doing some, some innovative things with new content brands or with brands that have been around for a while but are starting to really pop. Right. Um, uh, women's focused brands, uh, TMZ, um, the, uh, the original blog, acquisition that John did yep. that has grown uh, in size as well, uh, Jason Calacanis' company. Um, is it more of that, uh, more independent standalone brands using the AOL traffic and, and platform to leverage that, or, or is there some other secret sauce that we're uh, You know, we have a little secret sauce that I'm not ready to announce, but we have been working on something for the last three months that I think is a fairly substantial shift in our technology. and. Uh, you know, I think when that's ready to announce, maybe we'll come back and talk to you about it. But, um, but we really, I mean, I, this is the... Wait, 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 wait. Can you just tell me, <laughs> Sorry. is it in the, when you say technology, you're talking about technology to support content, or is it uh, a monetization technology, not unlike what John's doing now with Fan, or... Just give me, just give us a little something to speculate about. It's a, it's a, it's a broader platform with more information um, around co around content and the creation of content. So I'm not going to give you the answer you want, but okay. uh, but it's it's something that I think is a is a shift. I mean, I, we have in the last six months gone from you know about 500 journalists to over 3,000, and we see that platform evolving to a much higher scale than even that level. Um, you know, most of our large properties, the content properties, are 80 plus percent content that we generate ourselves, and we're going to continue that, you know, path. And if you think about that level of investment, um, and you think about the opportunities, if you look at where everyone's invested in the web so far, I mean, I don't know that many companies. You've been one of them, but that many companies that have really taken content management systems seriously um, to the level uh, that they need to be. And we we saw that as an opportunity. We started working on it this summer, and we've made really tremendous progress on it. Yeah, I agree there is a big opportunity there. <laughs> Let me ask you, because uh, AOL in the past has been acquisitive, um, do you think you're going to be again? Um, yeah, I think AOL, when I got, you know, one major issue I ran into at the company when I got there was because of the Yahoo deal where AOL was potentially going to get acquired by Yahoo, it really set the company back by a significant time period. And you know, one of the things that I recognized in the culture when I got there was really kind of fear. I think that you know, AOL might get acquired or, or those things. And basically, I think we've flipped it now where we're not making fear-based decisions. My guess is we will acquire other companies. I don't know what those companies are, and I don't know when. Well, and you don't know what your currency looks like yet. Right. And so, and by the way, one thing is, like, look at our marketing dollars are going into the product, period, full stop. Our money that we would have for acquisitions right now, I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about how do we make the world's best products every day um, and really improve the platforms. And, and I don't, I, I think unless the acquisitions we're going to do fit very squarely in our strategy or help us scale the platform, that's something we would probably hold off on. 
talk to me a little bit about the, you know, this not, sort of interesting, you know, kerfuffle we've had around Twitter uh, in the past few days, um, and and how AOL, if you have a point of view on, you know, uh, integrating uh, real time uh, conversation into your core services, is this something that you you're interested in doing? Yeah, we are. I think, you know, I mean, AOL, again, I think historically has been known for things like ICQ and AIM, which are really real-time conversations. And as a matter of fact, I think is very complementary, you know, to Twitter and other things. And we have Livestream, a product that we launch, which integrates more social applications that are real-time communication. So I think we do see that as part of our, our future. And as a matter of fact, Brad Garlinghouse, who we hired from, um, who was at Yahoo and then, and then Silver Lake, um, you know, he was just in Israel yesterday. I just had him breakfast with him this morning. He's, I think, you know, hopefully he's, he's, he's over here. Yeah. Um, you know, I think Brad's mandate, and really it's got to be up to him on the vision side of this, is really how do we take messaging to the next level? And I think, you know, Twitter, I'm a big fan of Twitter. I'm a big fan of, I know Evan well. I don't know Biz as well. But I, I think those guys have done something very impactful. And if, and if it works with our platforms and we can leverage it, I think we would be happy to do that. What do you make of Bing? Um, I, I think they've done a good job with Bing. And uh, I think that uh, Bing is something that I, I think it's getting, you know, I think it's getting the right amount of attention and, and buzz for what they've been, for what they've been doing. So I, I think in general it's been, I, I was surprised not, um, that it's been, I think it, they brought it out the level they did. I think there's clear areas where they're trying to improve it. I think there's other areas where it, actually they did some unique things. Yeah. So I, I'm, if, I were, if I were them, I'd probably be happy with it. Do you, do you believe that, that a content-based strategy like the one you've described can, and I, I guess the word is scale, um, you know, media businesses generally um, aren't given the same multiples by Wall Street that technology businesses are, like Google. Right. Um, even though Google takes a lot of the dollars from me, as media dollars, they get sort of sprinkled with the pixie dust of the underlying technology right. platform. Um, is what you described that you're not going to tell us about today uh, part of that technology pixie dust on top of your media that helps it scale? Right. So I, I would, um, you know, I don't know what the valuation is going to be, but I, I think one thing that's been interesting for me because I've spent really the last 15 years going back and forth between New York and Silicon Valley is, um, you know, people a lot of times in the media business look at Silicon Valley and get very envious. And they say, I'm, you know, creating lots of content and there's platforms there and they get all this pixie dust and their valuations are high. And I think we've taken the opposite view, which is, you know, why don't we take technology and be very serious about it? Like if you were to really think about what the combination of the media business, if you, if you smush the middle of the country together and put Silicon Valley and New York together, and created, a, created the company we think we're going to create, what would it look like? And that's really how we've, how we've looked at the technology that we're building. But how do you scale? I mean, how does, con I mean, can you scale? I can't tell you that. Oh, damn it. No, I, if you ask three or four ways, you might get something I, I out think, of uh, well, let me, let me, um, uh, if you, I, I'll use a television example, since we're, we're we, I can't tell you what I'm going to not tell you, um, is I think that the, when you look at the television channels and you think about the depth of content on there, if you have 300 channels, you know, the, the content on there could be much deeper and could be much more individualized. And the web, ops, if you think about the Twitters, the Facebooks, the Googles, the YouTubes, those things, you know, the distribution has massively changed in the last couple of years on the internet. And when I think about, when people ask me, people ask me that question all the time, why are you getting the content? It doesn't seem like it scales. And I look at the content from the distribution backwards. I don't look at what the formation of the content is. I look at, if you think about the distribution side of it, how would you set content up, uh, the entire process of content, to meet that distribution? And I think that's where the scale comes from. The scale actually doesn't come from thinking about the content. It comes from thinking about the distribution. OK. I think I'm following you. <laughs> um, I, I want to ask you, uh, go back to search, because um, I, I'm, I don't recall if it was if it's later this year or if it's next year, but the deal next year. next year. So it was a three year, a th four year <coughs> deal. Yep. Right. The deal which I'm sure you negotiated at Google with John Miller when he was here at Web two, three and a half years ago or, uh, or so is expiring. Right. And it was a hotly contested deal. Everyone wanted AOL's search uh, uh, deal. Yahoo, Microsoft, and uh, Google. Google won. Um, 
what are you looking for in a search provider when you renew that deal, or are you looking to do something completely new? Right. So one is, I, I think, you know, we're AOL is not in the search business. I think that's, you know, number one. Number two is, I think our needs have changed in the last four years. So I think the new search deal for us will be about search. Part of it will be about search, and part of it will be about the other distribution opportunities. And I think, you know, we, we're. We're not in a rush to get that deal done. I mean, the, the, the rights to our search deal are very valuable, and they will they'll remain valuable next year. So I think we're kind of patiently taking our time to think about what the deal we want is. And you know, Google has been a great partner. I think being on the other side of the partnership before I got to AOL, I think the companies have actually done remarkably well together. Um, I think that the, you know, Google has a leg up in terms of the, the relationship side of it because the companies know each other well. But I think we also, you know, I have to put on my AOL hat to say, you know, how do I make sure we get the right deal for our strategy? And, and I, I, everything we've done and everything the management team employees at AOL have done is start with strategy first. So I think our search deal would be a reflection of our strategy. Uh, I just, just asked Sergey about this and he expressed some dismay uh, over the, the, the fact that Yahoo had um, decided as AOL had well before, to not be a core search company. It's true that Yahoo is keeping its rights to build an interface on top of the, I guess, commodity right. search of Microsoft. Um, AOL has been doing that for a while, building on top of. Um, do you uh, do you agree with Sergey that that you would prefer to have seen Yahoo go it alone? You know, um, I hate to be so blunt about it, but I I wasn't as concerned probably as Sergey was um, about it. And I think that Yahoo probably had to do the right deal for what Yahoo had to do. And the reality of the situation, if you look at the CapEx spending and what people put behind search these days, if you're not going to be really good at search and really compete the way Microsoft and Google are doing, I think it's a very tough market you know, to be in. So was I you know, realistically thinking we'd be major search partners with Yahoo? No. Uh, and I think that you know it comes down to the performance of the product, the monetization, and I, I, my guess is Yahoo got, is getting out of it because they weren't able to compete at that level. Yeah. yeah. Um, guys, <coughs> please come up and ask Tim any questions on the microphones here and there. Um, it's it's kind of hard to see, but I'll wait for you. And while I do, can you put some stakes in the ground? Tell us the metrics by which you're judging, you know, where you are now and where, where you think success for AOL is going to be in two years, three years, five years, whatever your time frame is? Sure. So uh, first of all, when I got the company, the, the metric, main metric of the company was page views. And I think you know, that is something that I'm not attuned to. I'm attuned to how do we get unique visitor growth? How do we get more unique pieces of content on the web? How do we get into new white space areas? I think there's some very interesting white space areas on the web that we're uh, working when on. When you say looking. white space, what do you mean by that? Just I mean, ar areas hasn't where- Hasn't been painted yet. Hasn't been painted yet. A areas that are, that are open for innovation and areas that are actually where there's user interests, there's open, you know, with, and also, again, with distribution, mobile, those things changing, I think th those spaces are evolving all the time. So we're kind of focused on that. But look, if I had to break it down, it would be, you know, and I, I think this is going to be tough for us in 2010. I, this is probably not realistic, but for post-2010 is how do we get, you know, shareholder value, I mean, first and foremost, um, in terms of the metrics. And I think shareholder value comes from consumer value. I think that if, uh, if there was one metric I would be happy with, it's very, very large gro growth in unique visitors. And we'll figure out how to properly monetize the unique visitors. But if I, I'm zeroed in on unique visitors right now. What are they now? Can you give us? Yeah, it's roughly, and these are going to change, actually. Because next I, year I get to say, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. Right, all right. So. so let me warn you for next year is that we are. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can sandbag. I'm going to sandbag right now. <laughs> is, uh, we're at uh, roughly 270 million globally, 100 million in the U.S. And, but we're changing things. And I think that we may have, you know, there, hopefully not, but I think there may be cases where some of our areas we drop unique visitors based on improving the user experience. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think 2010 for us is really, really to start showing the metrics and the care and quality we're putting in the products. And my guess is, you know, we'll, at some period of time we'll have unique visitor growth. You know, it may go up and down in the meantime. But. Well, it's a pretty big number, but when you say you're changing something and they drop, does that mean you're acquiring people in a way that doesn't give them an experience that makes them want to come back? 
Yeah, um, no, it means that um, we may or may not be in all the properties we're in now uh, next year at this time. And we may be in more properties, we may be in less properties. So You I've may got, not have Time Warner pushing uniques your way. Is that part of the deal? No, that's not really part of the deal. Yeah. But okay. I'm just. No, no, I'm not. I, it's, it's not. It's pure. I'm just looking at AOL yeah, traffic. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, we've got questions over here. What's the vision for Patch? And, you know, what's happening with the migration of uh, Yellow Page revenue? Yeah, so Patch, uh, for people who don't know about it, is, a, uh, is a basically a test property we have running that's in over 10 towns, hyper-local towns, towns with roughly between you know, 15 and 50,000 people in them. And the business model around Patch is really to digitize towns. And we, we have uh, gone into these towns, and, and if you're in one of these towns, when you wake up one morning in your town, all the school information is online, all the government information, all the businesses, uh, all the events. Uh, and a lot of other things around that town are online. And the vision for Patch is really, I mean, this is, you know, uh, this is a lot about business, but it's also about something that could be very good for the world, which is, you know, I think there's been a lack of investments in that space, and we really feel like with our brand and with our company, that's a core area that we can innovate in. And uh, I think, you know, we'll see how next year goes with it, but we're kind of excited about that area and, uh, and focused on it. Um, and I think hopefully if you've uh, looked at Patch or seen it, uh, you know, I, I think it looks simple from the outside. It's more technical probably underneath the surface than people realize. I'm sorry, the second part of the question was? I don't think I remember. Yellow Pages. Yellow Pages. Yellow pages are um, so, you know, Yellow Pages, I think, uh, I th it looks, uh, Yellow Pages to me, it looks a lot like the early web did in early search, which is, you know, people haven't changed their behavior yet. The consumers have shifted much faster than the advertisers or those business businesses have shifted. So, you know, my guess is the, first of all, I think in the future, the yellow page business, if that's what we're calling it, local, you know, how local businesses market themselves will be exponentially better than it is today. I think there's a lot of interesting small companies out there who are working on this. And if you look at what they're doing, what we're doing on Patch, it's, you know, it's, it's a very, very rich experience. So I think yellow pages will actually become more important in the future than less. Uh, uh, online yellow pages. Right. I wanted to ask you to talk about uh, email and uh, email service and ICQ and how do those properties fit into your more focused strategy? Yeah, so, <clears throat> you know, we, we've announced kind of a five area focus strategy, which is content ads, local communications, and AOL ventures which I'm happy to describe if you want. It, when you boil that down, it's really three things. It's, it's uh, content, ads, and communications. And in the communications bucket, um, what you're asking about, is that's really a big, big, big part of our community. And, um, and I think you know, AOL historically, a lot of people ask me when I travel around the world, they're like, you know, why, do, why isn't uh, AIM or ICQ a billion dollar business? And you know, the reality is, can it be a billion dollar business? It may, maybe it could, but I think we're very focused on using that part of the strategy to make sure there's a high level of community and recirculation around our other properties. And in reality, that's what happens today. And I, I, the people that we compete against, I think their, their services do the same thing. So <clears throat> I think strategy for us starts with content, monetize it with ads, and move traffic and uh, people through the system on a very, very good communications products. I'll go over here. Hey, hey Tim. Hey. The, uh, did I hear you correctly? You went from 500 to 2,000 journalists, basically. Since you I think started. he said three. 3,000. 3, yeah. Holy cow! How did you do that? Is that all hiring, or are people sort of rebranded from, uh, you know, technician to journalist? And what are they all doing? Uh, sure. So I hopefully nobody's been rebranded, but uh, I think mainly it's it's a partial of hiring and then having a, you know pretty substantial freelance people that we have on, on uh, payroll. And I think really what we've done, if you take a step back and look what we've done, is we really have come up with a content strategy which we fundamentally believe that fragmentation is our friend. And uh, when you think fragmentation is your friend on the distribution side, the question is what properties would you create and then what type of content would you do behind them? So we started to really quickly add content when we saw the success between what the properties were and what the distribution was, and we've kind of done a good job of matching those you know, together. So I, those, those people are basically creating content, and we're doing over 3,000 pieces of content a day you know, right now online, and we'll probably do substantially more than that um, coming up. And I think they're doing things that are very specific in nature for the type of distribution and properties we have. And then the other thing they're starting to do, which has been great actually, is we're doing probably three to four times the amount of video 
we were doing from three or four months ago as well. So we really look at these content people, journalists, as content producers who basically, you know, are multifaceted ways for us to build, you know, community. And I, I think, you know, we've hired people from places like the Wall Street Journal and, and uh, you know, uh, ESPN and other places like that. And I think those people come. The thing I think about with journalism is journalists, and you're, you're a great example of this, you're not just hiring a person, you're hiring the community you know, they come with. And I think that has been an important part of what that 500 to 3,000 people, when you really look at the network effects of that, which networked us into a lot more than 3,000, you know, potential people doing content. And I think we'll continue to do that. There's one over here. Uh, from a content producer's point of view, I'm curious to uh, understand your perspective on where we are in history as far as the computer getting us to where we are today, but the vast potential in the mobile space. And um, thinking of this inflection point, understanding how you're sort of approaching a content strategy um, from those two entry points into your system. And whether um, one takes, is more of a foundation for your future strategies than the other, or how they interweave with one another. Yeah, I think we're, uh, you know, we talk about that a lot. Um, and uh, I think there's actually some very interesting ideas on that front um, from a device standpoint. Um, but we are mainly focused right now on trying to serve the um, users, the content that actually is most appropriate for them. And I think it, when I was describing before the system we think about, I think we do think about it from what's the mechanics they're using to, to create the content all the way through how you, you know, distribute it. So. My guess is the mobile opportunity is a pretty significant opportunity in the future to have more people intake, which is already happening today. It's happening at this conference, by the way. Uh, yeah. People taking mobile content and, and putting it in different um, services. So uh, in our minds, I'm a little agnostic towards it. I think the right device, right input should come for the right type of content you're doing. But my guess is mobile will be a very a pretty significant part of that in the future. So you see that as possibly as a, a completely standalone product and interface, or do you consider that an extension of what you're providing through the computer and uh, into a mobile world? I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. You got an honest answer out of it. We're very close to, <coughs> to running out of time, but I, and I wanted to, to, to circle back to, w to where we started. Um, a lot of folks who I think you might say have a, a bent or, or a, some DNA that you might call media DNA yourself, uh, uh, Richard Rosenblatt, the founder of DoubleClick, uh, Sukinder Singh Cassidy, Sheryl Sandberg, um, have left Google. These are all sort of your peer set, really, a lot of them very senior people. Is, there, uh, is that a natural progression of the company, or do you see that the company, uh, Google, um, is trying to get into some areas where maybe some folks thought it, it wasn't very good or it didn't belong there and, and it caused a diaspora of sorts? Um, you know, I think probably for those individuals, they, they could answer individually. Um, but to your question, I think, I think it's probably just the opposite. Uh, I, if, if I'm thinking about myself and why I made my you know, decision, um, it was more about probably personally for me. I actually, I like the fact that, I know Google gets criticized a lot for going into these other areas, but I think if you think about one thing that, that Google has done well, it's actually kept in front of a lot of the curves that are happening. And you know, I, I, we used to get criticized a lot when I was at Google because we were trying out all these different ad things, print and radio. and, and and in reality, I mean, from how well we were doing in the other business we were in, you know, it made total sense for us to test these things. Even if it didn't work out, the amount of learning and information that you got from those things is hard to replicate. You can't just sit in a room and, and think about how you are going to do those things. And, you know, I think if Google gets credit for one thing, I think it actually is very practical about how it does, goes into all these areas. And look, I, I, they're in a lot of spaces, and, and it's easy to, I think, poke a hole at that. But the other side, it's really hard to criticize them based on the results. And I think that, you know, if you're not failing, you're probably not trying hard enough. And uh, I, I, that was probably one of the most enjoyable parts, you know, of Google. And, and by the way, being at a company now that got so scared it wasn't taking any risks, right? I mean, look at the opposite end of the spectrum. AOL took no risks, um, or very few. And, and well, there was Bebo. Um, so, uh, so I, I, I think that. Um, it depends what risk you take and when you take them. 
<laughs> but, um, and by the way, let me make one comment about Bebo, because Bebo is, is I mean, it's every, a great service. I, I'm just saying. It, it is a great service. It didn't seem to work out. Uh, here's the deal with Bebo's is a great product. We're engineering. We pulled it back out of the company. We're, we're trying to integrate it into AIM and all these other things. It didn't work well. So we pulled it back out, and now they're back to core engineering the Bebo platform. And look at I think Bebo you know, commanded the price it did and got the attention it did because it was actually a, a good product. And I, I look at shame on us. I mean, I think that, you know, hopefully we can get it back into a point where, and I think we're working on that right now, where the engineers are back to really just on Bebo. So, uh, but I, I look at, I, I, one of the reasons I came to AOL, because it's a risk. And I think if you don't want to take risks and you don't think the future is bright, the internet is probably not the right place for right. you. I hear you well. Uh, best of luck. I hope you come back and let us know how it right. goes. In Thanks a year. for having us. Thank you very much for, for coming, Jim. Thanks, Thanks John. Thanks.